I'm here with Kevin Como at MIT in the Research Lab of Electronics. And we're here to look at a demonstration of using synchronized chaos uh, for possible applications to private communications. The idea is to build a circuit that is an analog implementation of the Lorentz equations. And uh, Kevin did this as a graduate student working for Al Oppenheim here at MIT. Uh, Kevin, can you tell us a little bit about your circuit and the uh, demonstration you've set up for us? Sure, Steve. What we have here is an analog circuit that uh, implements the Lorenz equations. Because of the two nonlinear terms in the Lorenz equations, we had to use two analog multipliers shown here as these brass chips. But all the other circuitry is basically off-the-shelf hardware, operational amplifiers and resistors, and uh, these components basically implement the vector field of the Lorenz equations. And then there are three integrators, which uh, take the x dot, y dot, and z dot equations and integrate those variables to actually give us uh, the chaotic x of t, y of t, and z of t of the Lorenz equations. And so all the transmitter uh, uh, implementation is shown here on this 2 inch by 3 inch board. And we also built a second nearly identical circuit, which functions as a receiver. And the, uh, the receiver has the property that when we take the chaotic signal x of t from the transmitter and feed it in, to the receiver in a special way that the receiver will precisely synchronize to the transmitter. And so as I go through the demonstration, I'll talk a little bit about the uh, behavior of the transmitter, then I'll show uh, synchronization between the transmitter and receiver, and then I'll show how we can exploit uh, synchronization for certain applications. Uh, what we're looking at in the oscilloscope here is a plot of the transmitter variables, x of t versus z of t. Uh, as you recall, the Lorenz equations have a bifurcation parameter, that's the R parameter, also known as the Rayleigh coefficient. And by varying R, we can actually see uh, qualitative changes in the dy dynamical behavior of the Lorenz circuit. For example, when I decrease the R parameter, we eventually go to one of the stable fixed points of the Lorenz equations. Uh, we can actually listen to the, to the uh, chaotic signals to a loudspeaker, so let me put that up now. Uh, of course, the R parameter is small enough now, it's on the order of about 20, so the fixed points are stable and we're not really oscillating at this point. What we want to do is in increase R until the fixed point goes unstable. And that happens around R equal to about 33. You can see we're starting to get close because the fixed point goes unstable and we go into a limit cycle regime. And you can actually hear the clear audible tone corresponding to that uh, motion on the limit cycle. If we increase R a little bit further, the uh, limit cycle becomes unstable and actually bifurcates into a two cycle. And if we were to look at the signal on a spectrum analyzer, we'd actually see two peaks in the power spectrum corresponding to the two periodic components of this. Uh, as we increase the bifurcation parameter further, we go into a Rosler regime, which is a chaotic regime. And audibly, we can sort of hear that as a very broadband signal. That is, no stable periodic components uh, are involving when we're in a positive regime of operation. And finally, as we increase R further, we get the uh, full chaotic regime. That is, where the motion is around the two unstable nodes of the Lorenz factor. OK, so now that the transmitter is operating chaotically, I want to show you that the receiver is, in fact, synchronized. And the way we do that is we're going to make a plot of the transmitter's x of t versus the receiver's uh, x of t signal. And if things are perfectly synchronized, we should get a perfect 45 degree line. But of course, because the transmitter's bifurcation parameter is a little bit different than the receiver's, we have some synchronization error. We can actually listen to the synchronization error here. But what we want to do is adjust the transmitter's parameters so that they uh, barely nearly match the receiver's parameters. And you can see right now, because the transmitter and receiver parameters are nearly matched, we have a nearly perfect straight line here, 45 degree line, indicating that the transmitter and receiver are operating synchronously. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. In fact, we can make a plot of the transmitter's y of t versus the receiver's y of t. And again, we see that the y components are, are synchronized, and we can do the same for the z components as well. So what we have is a uh, chaotic transmitter, which has synchronized a nearly identical chaotic receiver. And for applications, this is important, because what we'd like to do is take an analog speech signal, for example, 
at, at a low power to the chaotic drive signal, that is the signal that's synchronizing the receiver, uh, the reason we want it at low power is we want to use the more powerful chaotic signal to mask the speech. And then we want to exploit the synchronization properties of the receiver to actually regenerate the chaotic masking signal and then we'll subtract it off in analog hardware to actually uncover the message. So let me demonstrate how that works. First, what I'll play for you is the original speech signal coming from a tape recorder. This is the Mariah Carey hit song, Emotions. Okay, now what we want to do is to take this speech signal and actually in, uh, add it with analog adders to the chaotic drive signal like the T. When we do that, the first thing we see is that there is some synchronization error between the transmitter and the receiver. But it's actually a remarkable property of the Lorenz system that the synchronization error turns out to be almost perfectly coherent with the message itself, and that actually helps the message recovery process. Uh, let us now actually hear the transmitted chaotic signal with the music buried in the chaos. Okay, so even though we're actually playing the speech right now, we really can't hear it because it's being matched by the more powerful chaotic drive signal. And so that suggests that the um, a possible application for actually masking information signals with chaotic signals. And what we, I want to play now is actually uh, exploit the, the fact that the receiver is uh, very nearly synchronized with the transmitter to actually use that regenerated uh, drive signal in the receiver to subtract it off from the hybrid receive signal. And when we do that, we can actually uncover the speech. Now, the recovered signal is a little bit fuzzy, but we're really not doing much post processing on it, except for a low pass filtering operation. Uh, even though it's fuzzy, we can actually understand the words and hear most of the music. you saw uh, regarding synchronized chaos and private communications, you could first read uh, the paper by Kokora and Kara, which uh, introduced the idea of synchronized chaos in Physical Review Letters, volume 64, page 821, and it appeared in 1990. And for the specific circuit implementation that you saw in the demonstration, uh, see the paper by Cuomo and Oppenheim. Physical Review Letters, Volume 71, page 65, 1993.